In this video I'll be doing an unboxing of this Asus AM1MA motherboard which I purchased from Amazon for £25. So this is for the new AMD AM1 range which is a budget range of CPUs. It's compatible with both the Athlon and Simpron range. I'll be using this in my NAS. So firstly I look at the outside of the box. So it mentions about the AM1 platform, Athlon, Simpron range, Windows ready for 8.1. Uh, a few little features there, interestingly that one there, stainless steel back input output plate. And I was thinking, yeah, what's the big deal about that? But I went and checked my other couple of motherboards and they were aluminium. So that's different, does it make a huge change? No, not really. A little bit about the features here, UEFI BIOS, whatever they do with the USB 3, make it incompatible with Linux possibly, I don't know, the last versions were energy efficiency and the AI suite of version 3. Hmm. Okay. Take a look inside the box. So there's the motherboard wrapped in an anti-static bag. Put that to the side for a moment and look what we're getting here. So that'll probably be two SATA cables I guess. Yep. The back plate and we've got the instruction manual. Oh, what we've got dropped out of here. Safety information. Wow, I'll be sure to read all that. As a driver CD. A brief bit about the motherboard layout. Australia statement notice. Okay. Very nice. So here is the board. It's MATX sized. Now slightly smaller version of MATX I believe, but it's certainly not an ITX size. On the back plate we have a PS2, two USBs, HDMI, DVI, standard monitor, two USB 3s, another two USBs, so that's four USB 2s on the back, gigabit LAN, headphone and microphone input. Let's turn it around to look at the side. So we have three PCIe card slots, so it's a PCIe X16 running at X4 speed and two PCI1 slots. There's an AAFP slot, I'm going to have to have a quick look at what that means. It means the front panel audio connectors. Why are you just... I don't, I don't understand how or what the extra A is, so audio front panel. Printer port or parallel port. Comms, that'd be serial port. Another two USBs, so that'll provide another four USB 2 ports. Front panel connectors, and those are the connection for the LED lights. On this side, we have two SATA ports running at 6 gigabit a second speed. Now, what I notice here on the new range of these AMD motherboards is that they've certainly reduced the number of SATA ports. Remember, they always used to come with four, five or six ports. Power connector, two DDR3 memory slots that accepts up to DDR3 1600 speed. There's a slot for your CPU. On the middle of the board there we have a slot for the USB 3 and a chassis fan. On this side we've got a slot here for a CPU fan for four pin. Interestingly, the CPU I bought had a 3-pin fan, and I did point out that has no variable speed selector on it, but what I meant by that was it's not variable as the CPU is running. It is variable in the terms that you can set it in the BIOS. And one power connector for the CPU. So that is it. So it certainly is a budget motherboard. They've cut quite a few components out of it that you would expect to see on more expensive boards, such as at least another row of PCI slots. At least it does have all PCI Express slots here, not just the regular PCI, which are next to useless nowadays. I suppose, yeah, you get what you pay for. This cost me £25. Other motherboards I bought cost well over £100. I will be adding more hard drives to the board with the PCIe X16 slot, so I've bought a SATA card which running at X2 speed provides another four SATA ports. You could put an aftermarket AMD or Nvidia graphics card into here, 
but you don't really want to go that high on the range because it's running at X4 speed. If you're going to the top range, top of the range cars, they're going to be throttled so badly on the speed. But then you wouldn't be buying a cheap motherboard if that was what you're aiming to do. So that was a look at the Asus AM1 MA motherboard. Thanks for watching. See you all later.